Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Aditya Gupta. I'm currently pursuing my DM in Pediatric Oncology from Ames, New Delhi, having done my MD in Pediatrics and MBBS from Ames, Delhi. In this video, we'll be discussing about retinoblastoma from your neat PG point of view. And so let's begin. So we all know that retinoblastoma is the, the one cancer and the RB gene is the one gene that essentially uh, led Nassan to propose his two-hit hypothesis. I won't be going into the two-hit hypothesis, that's a part of pathology. I'll be focusing more on the oncology and the clinical aspects of it. Uh, and going just to delving a little bit into the pathology part. So RB is a, we know is a tumor suppressor gene. So we essentially what Nutson essentially said was that you require two hits to occur. The first hit, if it's occurring in germline, the second hit will occur very soon after birth. And uh, that's why the hereditary retinoblastoma tends to present earlier in the first six months. While if there's going to be a somatic mutation, then the two hits will take some time between them and the presentation will be much later at three years of age. And but sooner or later, these two hits will occur. And that's why retinoblastoma is uh, inherited in an autosomal dominant manner. If it's present in germline, the second hit sooner or later will occur. And that's why despite uh, even a single gene being mutated, it's uh, uh, inherited in an autosomal dominant manner. So. Uh, just a brief about the nuts and two hit hypothesis. Uh, RB is a tumor suppressor gene. It's present on chromosome 13Q. It was the first tumor suppressor gene to be identified. And uh, how does it act? How does it suppress tumor? So we all know that the cell cycle consists of G1, S, G2 and M phases. The most important transition point is the G1 to S transition point. Because a cell which whenever it enters the S cycle, S that is the replication fate, it sooner or later has to complete the cell cycle and it has to divide. So the main transition point, the G1 to S is the point where you can stop most of the things from occurring. And here, something called as E2F and cyclin. E2F is a factor which with cyclin, cyclins are essentially which propagate the cell cycle, causes this transition from G1 to S. So causes the cell cycle to progress. So a tumor suppressor gene obviously will cause the cell cycle to get suppressed. And here this is where retinoblastoma gene or the RB gene comes into picture. The RB gene secretes results in formation of a RB protein. This RB protein engulfs E2F. If it engulfs E2F, obviously it won't, the G1 to S transition won't occur. And how, when the cell cycle transition has to occur, despite RB being present, then cyclin D acts. Cyclin D will inhibit RB. Cyclin D will actually, in fact, cause phosphorylation of RB. And that will prevent a re a retinoblastoma, the RB product, from engulfing or, you know, you know uh, making a complex with E2F. E2F will be released and it will cause this G1 to S transition. Hopefully this is clear from this. Uh, I'll ask you a question. You have to reply in the comment section. Cyclin D is present on which chromosome? Uh, I know this might sound tough right now, but remember a lymphoma. Uh, I'll even give you the hint of that lymphoma. Mantle lymphoma. One chromosome is chromosome dash. Another chromosome is chromosome 14. And 14th chromosome has, I as we all know, 14th chromosome is a hemoglobin heavy chain. So that's how you can remember things, you know, if you link things up and everything. Anyhow, let's move on forward. About the 100% of the, of the 100 cases that we see of retinoblastoma, around 40% are hereditary, 60% are sporadic, or the sporadic cases will occur because of the somatic mutation. By somatic, I mean they're not present in germline, they'll be present only in the retinal cells, okay? 40%, by 40% hereditary, I mean, the mutations will be present in the germline, they will be present in the germ cells uh, of the parents. Having said that, it does not mean the parents by themselves will have the gene. It is only the germ cells that carry this mutation. So 15% cases are familial. 20% will have de novo, like by itself mutations in the germ cells of those particular parents. Okay, so 40% cases are hereditary, 60% are sporadic. It's inherited in an autosomal dominant manner. I have explained the nuts and two hypothesis in brief. So the difference between germline and somatic is, this is where the most important difference comes. So just somatic, when there will be a somatic mutation, somatic means soma, soma means those particular cells, those that particular tissue only. So in somatic mutation, the mutation is present only in the retinal cells. So if they are present only in the retinal cells, will, it will be mostly be unilateral and unifocal, it will occur in only one eye. But when it's germline, it is present in entire cells of the body, right? And first manifestation most commonly is in the form of retinoblastoma. It will most like more likely to present with bilateral retinoblastoma. If it's presenting with unilateral retinoblastoma, it is more likely to be multifocal. So that's when how we decide whether the retinoblastoma is a uh, hereditary or sporadic. So if I see a child and I see evaluate the fundus of that child, I won't. Obviously, the ophthalmologist will evaluate the fundus of the child. And he sees a unifocal single mass. It's most likely, and in a single eye, it's most likely to be sporadic. But if I see bilateral retinoblastoma, or if I see in one eye but multifocal, it's more likely to be 
हेरिडेटरी और द म्यूटेशन इज बेसिकली द म्यूटेशन इज अकिंग द जर्म लाइन एंड प्रेजेंट थ्रू आउट द सेल्स वेन द म्यूटेशन इज ओनली इन द समार्टिक इट्स प्रेजेंट ओनली इन द आई देन यू डोंट हैव एनी यू डोंट हैव रिस्क ऑफ यू नो गेटिंग अदर मालेगनेट न्यू प्लाजम बट वेन द ट्यूमर सेपरेशन जीन दट आर बी जीन इज म्यूटेटेड इन एवरी सेल ऑफ द बॉडी एंड ऑब्वियसली दिस सिंस दिस जीन इज नॉट फंक्शन यू कैन गेट अदर टाइप्स ऑफ कैंसर और द सेकेंडरी मेलेगनेट न्यू प्लाजम द मोस्ट कॉमन इज ऑस्ट्रोसाकोमा दिस हैज बिन आस इन यूर एंट्रेंस एग्जामिनेशन मल्टीपल टाइम दिस अ वेरी फेवरेट क्वेश्चन ऑफ यू एस एम एल एक्चुअली फॉर दैट मैटर ऑफ आर सो द सेकेंड मोस्ट कॉमन इन अ चाइल्ड हू हैज जर्म लाइन आर बी म्यूटेशन और अ फैमिल रिटनो प्लस टू माई चाइल्ड द सेकेंड मोस्ट कैंसर कॉमन कैंसर सो बेसिकली इनिशियल दे विल प्रेजेंट विद रेटनो प्लस टू माइन एट टेन और ट्वेल्व ईयर्स ऑफ एज दे माइट एंड अप हैविंग ऑस्टिसाकोमा सो हाउ डू दे प्रेजेंट द मोस्ट कॉमन प्रेजेंटेशन इज वाइट आई रिफ्लेक्स दे विल सी अ वाइट यू नो शाइनी ऑब्जेक्ट इन द आई ऑफ द चाइल्ड सो वी नीड टू नो द डिफ्रेंशियल डायग्नोसिस एंड नॉन मालेगनेंट कॉजेस बिकॉज ऑब्वियसली टेलिंग दट चाइल्ड चाइल्ड हैज मालेगनेंसी इज अ वेरी हैवी वो वी शुड नो दट दीज आर द नॉन मालेगनेंट कॉजेज एंड दे शुड भी रूल्ड आउट Uh, the most common ones are the infectious ones are the toxocara the uh, persistent uh, pphv the coast disease the retinopathy of prematurity congenital crack drug so these are the differential diagnoses that you should remember so, or they can ask you which which is uh, which is following causes white eye and multiple options can be given on all these are the causes including retinoblastoma are a cause of leukocoria or white eye reflex other sometimes the eye will fungate obviously if the tumor grows it will fungate out it will come out it will cause butholmos and sometimes if the mets are there the presentation of mets can also be there so if the mets have occurred to the bone there will be bony pain if the mets have occurred in bone marrow there will be bone marrow failure there will be anemia thrombocytopenia if the, it has penetrated and gone into the cns seizures we can occur raised icit can occur and things like that if it's falling down from retinoblastoma from the lymph node it goes to preauricular and cervical then can be cervical and preauricular lymphadenopathy now how do you treat so we can treat the all the three modalities are used you give chemo you give radiation and your surgery so the preference is first we have to preserve the vision of the child if vision cannot be preserved we have to preserve the orbit eye of the child essentially in order to decrease the cosmetic complication and lastly the one one thing that we definitely want to preserve is the life of the child okay understood so first thing that uh, uh, most commonly the systemic chemotherapy consists of three drugs Sy- uh, carboplatin etoposide vincristin radiation to the particular eye or surgery in the form of enucleation now i you don't need to remember the exact details uh, research for classification initially was used uh, nowadays it's redundant you must have read it in hopta i won't go into the details i don't think so research for will uh, research for uh, is going to be asked because it's now redundant instead now we have for extraocular rb uh, international risk stratification and uh, uh international rat- retinoblastoma or uh, uh staging system irss staging system and uh, for intraocular retinoblastoma we have international classification of intraocular retinoblastoma i won't go into the details because i think they are way too detailed and would not be asked in pg entrance examination so thank you and have a nice day